Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. I'm here in the studio with John Chapman, who is a candidate running for Congress in the 9th District, which includes the Cape and Islands. He is looking to unseat the incumbent, Bill Keating. But we're focused on politics with the upcoming primary election on September 9th, and among the races that will have a contested primary is the 9th congressional seat. Four Republicans are running to unseat Congressman Keating. John Chapman is one of them. The primary will determine which of them will appear on the general election ballot in November. John, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Laura. It's great to be here. Let's start with your background. Tell us a little about yourself, how long you've been on Cape Cod, what brought you here, and what you do for a living. Well, I, well, right now my living is I'm running for office, but I've been a, I've been a uh, lawyer most of my life. Uh, and actually, I've been uh, coming to Cape Cod and here on Cape Cod my entire life. I just turned 50. I went right from the hospital to Cape Cod, and I'm a resident of Chatham. Um, so that's, uh, you know, I've been, been an attorney for, for about 23 years. So you're running in the Republican primary. Tell us about your political f- philosophy and why you decide to run for Congress. Well, sure thing. Um, do you want me to give a little bit of background or do you want me to jump right into why I'm running? Why you're running would be great. Well, sure. Well, I, um, I'm running because I really think uh, Washington is, is completely broken and it's, uh, it's become arrogant, it's become polarized, and it's completely lost touch with the people it's supposed to be representing. Um, federal government is too big. Congress isn't listening. Our national debt's seventeen trillion and growing, and all we have pl- taking place down in Washington is partisan bickering. Now, tell me about your experience in politics or in town committees. Any uh, local involvement? Oh, sure thing. Well, I actually got my political start back in uh, right after graduating from college in the Reagan White House. I was an aide in the White House, uh, and that was really where I got the bug to uh, to be involved and be interested in politics. Also, this is my first run for elective office, uh, but I had the pleasure and the honor of uh, serving in Governor Romney's uh, administration. I was an agency head for Governor Romney. Um, and uh, in charge of the workers' comp system, where I led some agency reforms, eliminating a 5,000 case backlog, um, uh, also eliminating uh, outside counsel fees, as well as um, uh, increasing the enforcement rate for uh, stop work orders at the agency from 40 percent to 100 percent when I left. Interesting. And so, and turning to the Cape and Islands, what do you feel are the biggest issues here in the region that you feel you could influence as congressman? Well, certainly, I, I think there are a number of issues here on the Cape, uh, and there are a lot of very uh, uh, focused issues that the that the Cape cares about. Um, certainly, flood insurance, and I think that is one that uh, the current congressman uh, really let the people down here on Cape Cod about. Um, also, uh, the fishing industry. Uh, I will my campaign will be releasing in the next week or so uh, some policy recommendations with regard to fishing and, and bringing focus to to that industry. Um, those are sort of the more local issues. But, of course, on the larger scale, I'm, my campaign is focusing on uh, we're looking at uh, jobs in the economy. We're looking at uh, uh, we think spending down in Washington has just been too reckless. And, uh, of course, health care, which is one of the issues that originally got me into this race. Now, it's interesting you bring up fishing because being from Chatham, that's certainly a big issue there with the Cape's biggest fishing fleet. What are your thoughts on what's been going on with the fishing industry? Well, I, I think government's been too involved. Uh, you know, fishing, Laura, is actually something that's very close to me because my my older brother uh, was a commercial fisherman down in Chatham for 25 years, and he gives me lots of thoughts. Uh, he's uh, out of the industry now, but uh, I certainly hear from the fishermen on, on the Cape as well as down in the South Coast in New Bedford that government plays too large a role, and uh, in, they really have been the regulations and they're being dictated from Washington where they don't really understand how their regulations are impacting the the industry and the families that uh, fish for a living. 
I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're focused on politics with the upcoming primary election on September 9th. I'm talking with John Chapman, who is running for Congress in the 9th District, which includes the Cape and Islands. Talking about local issues some more, wastewater seems to be something that often comes up on the Cape, something that, that um, there could be some influence from, from the federal government to help us out here on the Cape. Tell us your thoughts on that. Well, wastewater absolutely is an, is an issue of focus. And uh, I think with the, the federal government has a role here, uh, as well as state government, and I believe as well as private industry. What it comes down to is uh, we want to have a plan that is is uh, uh, that we can where we can figure out and we can solve this issue. And of course, the plan has to include how we're going to pay for this. And I think that's where we can get some involvement from the federal government as well as state government in private industry. I think public. This is a great opportunity for some good public-private partnerships. Another big issue here on the Cape and Islands, affordable housing. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, we certainly need the opportunity to have more affordable housing for for the workforce as well as uh, young professionals. I just recently uh, heard about a Shape the Cape uh, survey from the CCYP, the Cape Cod Young Professionals, and one of the items they touched upon was just this issue of housing. We need to have a dialogue about it. We need to get serious about it and find ways to have affordable housing for our young professionals in all working families here in the Commonwealth. And talking about some of the top issues of the day nationally, what are your feelings about the nation's immigration policy so much in the news lately? Well, I certainly, I I think we absolutely do need immigration reform. I'm a a person who believes that we should be securing the borders first and foremost. Uh, Also, I'm I'm opposed to amnesty of any sort. Uh, We are a nation of laws. I'm a lawyer by training, so I I do hold the letter of the law uh, close to heart. I think it's important that um, uh, with, with with immigration that we focus on those folks who are waiting patiently in line to, to become U.S. citizens. Uh, and we have five to six million of those folks, and we are a nation of immigrants, and we want to make sure we make it as easy as possible and uh, uh, get, get, the, get the folks who are playing by the rules into this country as quickly as possible. Another big issue nationally, the recent news about Iraq. Tell, tell me about what you're thinking on those lines. Well, with Iraq, I think certainly uh, we, we have to be supportive uh, of humanitarian efforts in Iraq. Um, I think this is an evidence of a failed uh, policy by our, our current administration. Uh, really, I think that the president and the current administration let us down years ago with, with, with withdrawing from Iraq without having a status and forces agreement. We should have done that then. Uh, but, uh, but right now, this is an area where we need to focus on not uh, allowing these terrorist groups like ISIS to, uh, to have a home country of their own. And we need to work hard to uh, prevent that from happening. A big issue locally and nationally, renewable energy. Tell us your thoughts on that. Well, I am a big fan of uh, green energy and renewable energy. Uh, but, of course, the issue that's close to home is, uh, is the Cape Wind Project. That project I'm opposed to. I'm opposed to that project because I think initially because of siting, because I think Nantucket Sound is a true gem uh, for the region. Uh, but more recently, you know, it just is not a project that is economically feasible, and that's why I'm opposed to it. It's going to be adding three to four billion dollars uh, to uh, the ratepayers here in Massachusetts, and I'm opposed to the project uh, for those reasons as well. Now there are four Republicans running in the primary. You're one of them. Tell us what distinguishes you from the others. Well, I I, I certainly. Um, uh, I can distinguish myself from the others. I think I have broader experience. I have experience in the private sector, the public sector, in the nonprofit arena. uh, I'm the only uh, candidate here in this race that actually, uh, on the primary side, that uh, got to start uh, in the Reagan White House. I've been an agency head for Governor Romney. I've also uh, been an enforcement lawyer for the Securities and Exchange Commission in Washington. And uh, I've also uh, most recently served as the general counsel of Jocelyn Diabetes Center. It's important that I think certainly experience matters. And uh, I am the candidate that's actually balanced the government budget and and brought reform. And part of that reform team uh, with Governor Romney that cut taxes 19 times, that balanced the budget uh, all years that the governor was in 
in office, as well as created a very business-friendly environment for, for businesses here, here in the district. And with about a half a minute left, any final thoughts you'd like to leave with voters? Well, I think this is an opportunity for voters to uh, participate in an election. Uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of uh, election fatigue out there, and uh, voters are not feeling like their voice is being heard. But the fact that we have so many people in this race, this is an opportunity, I think, for, for my message as a Republican. I think it resonates with so many, so many people, uh, disengaged uh, Democrats as well as uh, the majority of independents. This is an opportunity to uh, participate in an election. I think I'm the right candidate to do that. I have the right experience. And uh, I want to be a voice for the district, which is something that we haven't had with the current congressman. He's been invisible and he hasn't been listening to the needs of, of the district. And unfortunately, we are out of time. John, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Laura. It was great to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to allow me to introduce myself to the voters. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.